I first of all would like to thank uh, uh, Pastor Miss Marble for giving me this opportunity to share my heart concerning one person, Jesus Christ. And so my message or my assignment tonight is uh, I, Luke, Isaiah, no, Luke 23, verse 43. And Jesus said, Assuredly, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, I like to read from uh, 39 through 43 for context. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, You are the Christ. If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other saying, or the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing that you're under the same condemnation, and we as we indeed justly? For we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And Jesus said, Lord, or the and he said to Jesus, the thief, he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say unto you, today. Today, that's key, you will be with me in paradise. Again, verse 43, Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This passage of scripture is more than just a thief filled with wickedness and being forgiven. In fact, in Matthew 27, 38, the Greek word for robber is one who uses violence to rob openly, daylight robbers, in contrast to the thief who secretly enters a house and steals. These two men were guilty of armed robbery. And Jesus is on the cross being crucified between two thieves. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ is the main event in human history and of the Christian faith. The crucifixion is also the, when the world expressed its hatred of God and its hostility toward him. Taking the life of the Lord of glory was not only the evil of sin, but it was the greed of the human heart. It was the world's ultimate, I want what I want when I want it. Again, Jesus is the central figure in history. His cross is the heart of the gospel. Amen. It tells us about the grace of God. His mercy providing a remedy for sin. His love ensuring the effectiveness of that remedy. The effectious or the efficacious power of the blood of Christ that was shed. On the cross ensures us as his personal possession. Let me say that again. It ensures us as his personal possession. As well as being, as well as being cleansed from all sin by the blood that flowed from Emmanuel's veins. Amen. This passage of scripture isn't just about two armed robbers, but it is an emphatic declaration that everyone will spend eternity somewhere in heaven or in hell. Yes, Jesus said in uh, Matthew 25 and 46, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. However you define that word eternal, it means the same thing in both places. Everyone has one of two destinies, heaven or hell. This isn't just about two robbers, how one receives grace and mercy and the other who is guilty and in misery and sides with the unbelieving Sanhedrin and mocks and rejects Jesus. No, 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 no. He joined in with the other believers saying, if you are the Christ, save us or save yourself and then us. I think that's the most dumbest thing I've ever heard, okay? But anyway, this shows us what? What does it show us? It says that you can see Jesus and still go to hell. It says that you can meet Jesus and still go to hell. It says that you can talk to Jesus and still go to hell. Again, this is the way to hell, to follow the opinions of the world system. The crowds point their finger at other
other people and won't acknowledge their guilt. Notice this thief. He called on the Lord and his request was denied. We've got to get it right with the Lord. And understand that all of us are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. All of our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. This robber didn't believe in our Savior King. He didn't believe in the work of Jesus Christ. This robber didn't want forgiveness. This robber only wanted escape. And this is what many in the church are doing today. They come to church every Wednesday, every Sunday, every holiday, and they're not looking for forgiveness. They're only looking for escape. But these people need deliverance from something bigger than sickness, poverty, and unhappiness. You need to get it right with the living God. And if you're going to get it right, you need to turn your ears away from preachers and sermons that will give you something more than a love connection and a financial breakthrough. If you're going to be what God has called you to be, somebody's got to say something about the virgin birth, the victory. The, the virtuous life, the vicarious death, the victorious resurrection, and the visible return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what we preach here at the fellowship. Amen. Amen. One thief went to hell. Then the other one went to heaven. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. But of all of the robbers on all of the hills... On all of the crosses, he happened to die next to Jesus. This is why we should never give up on God. You see, his, his sovereign grace can take the worst of our circumstances and work it out for your good. This is why we shouldn't give up on anyone. Because no matter, no matter how bad it looks and no matter how bad they're acting, it may look like the end, but it may be a setup for a new beginning. You see, amen. You see, this robber recognized that he was a great sinner. Verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God seeing that you're under the same condemnation? And indeed, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man... Has done nothing. Oh, you missed a good place to rejoice and praise the Lord. The robber recognized his guilt. Do you hear what the robber was saying? He said, this man has done nothing. Amen. This is a good place to praise the Lord. Amen. Why? Because our Christian hope is based in that statement. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. He lived a sinless life. You can't be a sinner and a savior at the same time. Jesus is the sinless Christ. We believe in the sinlessness of Christ. We also believe in the impeccability of Christ. We believe that he could not sin because he is God in the flesh. Verse 43 says, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today. Not tomorrow. Today. Not in the next hour, but today. All right, some of you don't get the theology. Today, you don't have time to say the sinner's prayer, but today. You don't have time to be baptized or join the church, but today you will be with me in, in paradise. Again, this verse is more than Jesus just forgiving a sinner sin. This verse is about the great Savior, the God-man. Who before time began, the Bible says of him, that he was slain before the foundation of the world. Now in the span of less than six hours, Jesus will turn the world upside down. Jesus Christ will die for the sin of the whole world. Of those entrusted to him by the Father before God, or time began. He will go down into the depths of paradise and preach to the righteous dead. Those who work, work righteousness. That he, pre he will preach to them that he is the savior of the world. And the Bible says that he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. 
He will give gifts to man upon his resurrection because he is now a life-giving spirit. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, that's a bunch of good news. All right. Because over 2000 years, it's still been good news. And now we, as well as everyone has that has believed in Jesus Christ, our Messiah King for all ages can praise him as the old hymn that says there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. A sinner's uh, and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty sins they lose all their guilty sins they lose all their guilty stains and the sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose their guilty stains amen, amen.